I'd like to invite up from Andox, Uri Gurevitz. Uri. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I'll be talking in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, 15 minutes I think, uh, about millennials and uh, specifically the younger millennials and uh, the teenagers. Uh, somewhere in the middle between Gen Z and, and millennials, you might hear you know, different, uh, uh, different uh, terms used for this uh, generation, uh, but really we're talking about the young, uh, the young customers. Some of them might not be the customers today, paying customers today, but they're definitely using the services. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about is how different they are uh, and why even, uh, although they're not paying customers today, why service providers should definitely uh, take a look and, uh, and realize uh, how they're different and what they're different in uh, because they will be paying customers in, in a few years. Um, so before we jump into that, I'll just introduce Amdocs to those of you who don't know Amdocs. Uh, global company, $3.6 billion, uh, that's last year's numbers, to, uh, 2015. Uh, market leader in customer experience solutions, billing, CRM, um, uh, digital solutions, so the whole uh, uh, BSS as well as OSS, uh, some network solutions uh, as well, as well as some uh, other uh, niche areas uh, that uh, uh, service the service providers, the communication service providers, uh, like mobile financial uh, uh, services, uh, like uh, uh, other such uh, services uh, that have to do with customer experience uh, solutions. We serve all the major service providers and I'm sure, I'm sure that most of you uh, know us uh, uh, already. So when we look at uh, the speed of uh, uh, change and why today, why do we think that today is different, uh, you can see on the screen uh, how long it took uh, for different, uh, uh, different services uh, to reach 50 million users worldwide. Uh, now granted, some of these are infrastructure and obviously uh, needed more infrastructure, uh, um, you know, built, which obviously takes more time and money, uh, but I think that you'll agree that it definitely, uh, you know, shows uh, the difference and the fast pace uh, uh, world we're living in. So if in the past it took 75 years for uh, uh, 50 million users to use uh, telephone, uh, 38 years uh, to use uh, radio, etc., uh, you can see we got up to 19 days uh, for 50 million users uh, to download and uh, start uh, playing Pokemon Go just uh, at the beginning of, uh, of this summer. Uh, which, you know, when you think about it, it's, uh, you know, an amazing uh, number. And again, you can see how it uh, relates to uh, some of the other uh, applications, even Angry Birds, which took, uh, you know, almost double uh, the, the time to reach the same uh, number. Uh, and we're talking about, uh, you know, similar types of, of uh, applications and, uh, and infrastructure uh, needed. Uh, so definitely we're living in a world where the speed of change is accelerating, everything is very rapid, uh, very fast. Uh, and, you know, everyone serving uh, these uh, customers obviously need to uh, adapt uh, to, to this. Um, the experience itself is completely different uh, today. You know, it needs to be real time as we saw in uh, Pokemon uh, uh, Go. It needs to be interactive. I don't just want uh, uh, a game or an application uh, where I go into it, I know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. I want this uh, uh, diversity, I want the, the uh, real time. Um, I want the cool graphics, I want the multiplayer, so I want to play against my friends and I want to play against uh, other people that uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, as I said, I want it customized, so if I'm in this room now, I want uh, uh, the experience to be different and the game itself to uh, kind of move along in a different way uh, than if I was uh, uh, downtown uh, San Francisco or if I was in a, in a different country. Um, I want it to be exciting and I want it uh, to be all about me. And this is something that we see over and over again when we talk about millennials, when we talk about uh, uh, teenagers. Uh, they see themselves in the center. They see themselves in, 
in the middle and they keep looking uh, for ways um, that uh, other companies providing services to them uh, acknowledge that and, and see that and, and realize that. Uh, and that's how they, uh, you know, view, view the world. They want to be in the middle uh, and they want all of these uh, traits to be in this experience that they're getting uh, from their service provider. Um, so, uh, um, you know, this is uh, very important when we uh, look at some examples in, in a minute on what are, uh, uh, what's, uh, you know, uh, uh, talking or, or, or what uh, makes sense to these uh, uh, teenagers or to uh, uh, these millennials. Um, they're definitely digital natives. Um, you know, they're already born into uh, this world. Um, uh, digital is something that, uh, you know, they've uh, uh, used, uh, that they've uh, uh, seen, uh, that is part of uh, who they are. You know, in different research we see uh, that uh, uh, teenagers especially uh, see uh, the smartphone that they have as something that d defines who they are, uh, defines their uh, uh, social status. They want, uh, you know, the, the coolest phone, the newest phone, uh, as they feel that this is the way that, uh, you know, others uh, see them. Um, and this is, I think, very different from the way that uh, uh, many of us, uh, you know, even the, the older millennials or the, the, the previous uh, uh, generations, uh, you know, view uh, uh, ourselves. Uh, we wouldn't put uh, uh, our smartphone as kind of the center of, uh, of defining who, who we are. Um, we're used to this experience. I mean, we've all seen uh, the babies, uh, the, the videos of the babies coming up to the screens, uh, playing around, you know, uh, uh, looking at a TV screen and not understanding why they can't, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, use a touch and kind of uh, uh, move the thing around. This is what uh, today's uh, uh, younger generation uh, was born into and uh, are used to using. Uh, and therefore, what does this mean then for service providers or for other uh, companies that are uh, offering different services to these uh, millennials and to these teenagers? Uh, we have an example here of, of BT, and I know uh, there were some folks from BT earlier in the day. I don't know if they're uh, here uh, now. Uh, but I think that this is, uh, you know, a great example of, of how uh, BT, um, you know, tried to target these uh, uh, younger uh, uh, customers. Um, by going to the channels where these younger customers are, um, you know, spend a lot of time anyway. And this has to do with uh, the European uh, Champions League, uh, which happened back in May. Uh, the game was in Milan. It was two teams from Madrid. It was Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, for those of you who are uh, uh, not uh, uh, too uh, aware of uh, European uh, soccer, European uh, football. Uh, and what BT did was, apart from, uh, you know, broadcasting the, the game on uh, their channels, uh, they partnered uh, with uh, different uh, platforms. Uh, again, in the idea of trying to reach these younger uh, customers and these uh, uh, younger uh, viewers in the channels uh, on which they're uh, already uh, using and where they are. Uh, because we all know the whole uh, concept of uh, cord cutting and that uh, these uh, uh, younger customers are not really watching TV channels, you know, on the big screen, on the big TV screen in the living room uh, like, uh, you know, uh, a previous generation used, used to do. So what did they do? First of all, they broadcasted the game not only on their channels, but they broadcast it on uh, YouTube. Uh, they also broadcast it on, on Facebook uh, Live. Uh, now, both Facebook and YouTube, two platforms which, uh, you know, traditionally were more um, short uh, videos, recorded videos, etc. Uh, we, we see that YouTube are trying to go into some of the live programming uh, uh, as well. Uh, and again, great partnership between BT and YouTube to show the, the, the game uh, for free on uh, YouTube live. Uh, Facebook as well, uh, again, we're used to seeing the short clips, Facebook Live definitely trying to go into more uh, live and, and longer uh, video uh, content. Uh, they started uh, with Facebook the whole day, uh, interviews uh, uh, around uh, the uh, previous uh, winners, around uh, different uh, uh, soccer experts, again, all on Facebook Live. Um, using the channel where the younger generation might be watching rather than the BT uh, sport channel. Uh, Snapchat, the last example here, um, another very interesting example because again, uh, Snapchat where these uh, younger uh, customers uh, use, a platform that they use for social media, 
uh, what VT did was they leveraged uh, the Snapchat uh, uh, clips, the, the day uh, in the life, and tried to do uh, uh, different clips. They invited their uh, uh, users uh, their viewers to record a day in the life of a fan. It could be either a fan in Milan who went to watch the game uh, or a fan uh, in Madrid of one of the two teams uh, and kind of, you know, showing how the, the fan uh, uh, telling about himself how he's preparing for the game, how he's watching the game, um, etc. Uh, again, a simple tool that uh, these uh, younger uh, customers uh, uh, use anyway uh, and try to kind of connect it to BT Sport and to an event uh, and be, you know, from, from the point of view of uh, BT, be in the platforms that these customers are uh, using and are watching and uh, are, are spending time uh, anyway. Um, what we also see let me just move then to a few more examples. And I know we just had the panel on, on uh, the, the uh, questions on IoT, so I won't go into too much detail there. But uh, th these statistics are from a survey, a global survey that we ran uh, around teenagers in uh, 12 different countries. Uh, you can see that 78% of them said that they would uh, uh, like to have an internet-connected device embedded in their arm. Um, so yes, they're thinking you know, more for, for the future, uh, perhaps, uh, but again, when you think about these teenagers, this does not scare them. If you ask me, I'm not sure I would want, uh, uh, you know, an internet-connected uh, device embedded in my arm, uh, but for them, it seems a lot more uh, uh, natural. Uh, and what would they do with it? You can see, monitor their health, uh, automatically buy things, uh, use it instead of a smartphone, open the uh, door of, uh, uh, the door of uh, my house, use car without keys, etc. So again, it kind of shows how for these uh, uh, younger customers, um, you know, the, 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 the whole concept of connected devices and then maybe connected, uh, you know, uh, uh, body, uh, seems, uh, you know, like a natural uh, uh, evolution uh, to them uh, from where we are today. When we asked them, uh, these uh, uh, teenagers, what do you consider as cool? Because they all kept saying that, you know, from their point of view, uh, an offering that would, uh, you know, make sense to them is something that's cool. Um, we asked them, what does cool actually mean? You can see the answers uh, on the left. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, two, uh, two things kind of uh, come uh, out of these uh, uh, responses, uh, which you can see then on, on the left, on, on the right then, the two examples there, which kind of, uh, uh, you know, show this at, at work. Uh, first of all, uh, again, as we said before, they want uh, this to be interactive. They're looking uh, for offerings that are interactive. Uh, they're looking for uh, offerings that are unique. Uh, they want to feel that uh, they're not just part of, uh, you know, a big uh, mass uh, uh, society, but that they're different and that the offerings being, uh, you know, offered to them uh, kind of highlight uh, the fact that they are different and the fact, the fact that they're not the same as everyone else, but they have their own, you know, unique uh, personality. Um, what was also important to them is the fact uh, that they want to be able to share it with friends. Again, kind of the, the social status, um, the, the whole uh, uh, social uh, aspect of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a service being cool is something that I can then share with my uh, friends. They can see how cool it is, how great it is, uh, etc. We have here two examples, one from uh, Nike, and you can see, um, you know, they uh, gave uh, the option for uh, customers to design uh, your own uh, soccer uh, uh, shoe. Um, again, I can design whatever graphics I want on the shoe, I can submit it online, and then, you know, I'll get the, the shoes delivered to me. Um, it gives me something that's uh, unique because it's something that I, uh, you know, design. No one else will have the exact same shoe as uh, me. Um, as well as something that I can then share with my uh, friends, you know, through the, the Nike uh, uh, website, through my own social uh, media platforms, etc. Um, the example on the right is a, a plan uh, from a service provider in the Philippines called uh, Globe. Uh, this plan is called Go Sacto. Uh, and again, this uh, uh, plan uh, allows me, the 
customer to design the uh, service plan uh, and the, the offering with uh, what I need and what I want. So I kind of start from a, you know, a, a fresh, uh, uh, a blank sheet and I can create the plan based on um, you know, my needs in terms of voice, in terms of uh, text, in terms of data, what sort of applications I'll be using. Uh, there are different uh, criteria and different things that I can uh, uh, describe within the plan. Uh, but again, it's something that would be unique uh, to me. What they also added, and you can see that uh, I think uh, on, on the bottom there, for those of you who can uh, read, you can also, uh, uh, you can also uh, post this uh, plan on Facebook. I can give this plan a name, so I can call this, for example, the plan that I designed. I can call it uh, you know, the URI plan, for example. I can post it on Facebook, so my friends see the type of plan that I got, and then they can actually call into the call center and say they want the URI plan. Um, because let's say that they believe that, uh, you know, I know what I'm looking for, they have similar needs as me, uh, they believe that I did my research and my homework and I know exactly what I want, um, so they can actually follow me and get the same plan with the same criteria uh, that I designed already. So again, it's kind of something, uh, you know, very different because it's something that I built myself uh, and I can share it with my friends so they all see what it is and why is it different, etc. They can copy from me if it, you know, makes sense to them. Um, so definitely, you know, two examples that kind of show, uh, uh, you know, what uh, uh, teenagers would consider as, as cool. Um, in terms of experiences, uh, lots and lots of, uh, you know, uh, uh, use of new technologies uh, which are uh, impacting uh, what this means then in terms of the experience uh, that these teenagers are looking for. Uh, robots, definitely something that we start seeing uh, being used by uh, some uh, retail stores, some banks, uh, some uh, communication companies, some hotels. Uh, Hilton started uh, 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 playing around with uh, a robot which is a concierge uh, in one of their hotels. You see from our research, 24% of teenagers believe that uh, robots robot will be their best friend in the future. Um, definitely something that, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, they're not scared of and, and see uh, robots as something that can, uh, can uh, help them. Uh, virtual reality, another big uh, area which you see in the middle there. This example is from uh, Google. Um, showing virtual tours of uh, uh, different uh, uh, tourist locations around the world. Uh, you can, uh, you know, click on it and you can see in this uh, uh, example Buckingham Palace uh, as if you're in the inside uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, palace uh, and you can see uh, as if you're walking around there. Uh, we see service providers uh, leverage this as well in terms of uh, support, in terms of uh, service, in terms of uh, uh, remote support, etc. Um, so definitely virtual uh, reality is an area that uh, uh, teenagers are, you know, looking for. Uh, and uh, we see different uh, types of uh, uh, services uh, being offered to them uh, and, and leveraging these uh, technologies. Um, so definitely in terms of offerings, you know, uh, the, the uh, um, summary is you need to accelerate the, the speed, you need to innovate, and you need to collaborate. And this kind of leads me then to some of uh, uh, my last couple slides, which talk more about uh, Amdocs and, uh, you know, why are we related to all of this in the ecosystem? Uh, um, you know, as, as we saw before, many of these solutions are, uh, you know, it's a whole ecosystem that needs to be built with a whole set of uh, partners. Uh, it's not one company that has the, the, the full uh, solution, uh, but it's building this uh, whole ecosystem. Uh, in Amdocs, apart from our own uh, uh, solutions, which we, you know, uh, built and uh, we, we promote, uh, some we built internally, some we acquired. Just a couple weeks ago, we uh, announced we, uh, an acquisition of three different uh, uh, companies in three different areas that uh, uh, Amdocs has invested in. Uh, but we also work a lot with uh, partners. Um, you know, we do uh, scouting, we, we uh, look at uh, different uh, uh, startups, uh, different uh, solutions, we try to create joint uh, demos, proof of concept, etc. kind of looking at the full ecosystem, uh, which definitely makes it easier for some of these uh, startups as well as some of these service providers, which I'm sure that, uh, you know, those of you in the room from uh, carriers have uh, seen some of our partner solutions. 
um, and have seen us kind of come with this uh, uh, full uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, and definitely, you know, a win-win uh, situation uh, uh, here. Um, so, you know, as the slide says, when we use the Amdocs uh, expertise and our relationships with the customers, um, definitely starting from the customer needs, which, you know, we at Amdocs, sometimes we have the solutions to. Uh, as I said before, today, as things become more uh, uh, complicated uh, and more around the full uh, uh, ecosystem and expertise, um, then we do need uh, these uh, uh, partner solutions uh, uh, as well. Uh, so when we work together, building these joint solutions, building, bringing the, the value to the carriers, uh, then definitely we can do great things uh, uh, together. And I'll just finish uh, then with uh, uh, this. Um, you know, in terms of Amdocs, we bring our products and services. We bring the, the expertise uh, as well as, uh, you know, innovation through internal innovation and, as I said, through uh, external uh, uh, partners and, and uh, uh, the full uh, uh, ecosystem. And we bring it to the global scale because, uh, you know, we do have uh, uh, the, the reach in, uh, you know, multiple countries working with uh, uh, so many of the larger and the, the smaller service providers around the world. Uh, then definitely, you know, uh, uh, we can build this uh, full uh, uh, ecosystem uh, and bring the value to the uh, customers. So we do have a booth uh, uh, outside, a table outside. We'll be happy to talk to carriers. We'll be happy to talk to, uh, um, you know, startups with uh, uh, cool solutions. Uh, so thank you very much. I think our time's up, right? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. You guys, that's really... Um, you know, it's great. You guys did a, MDocs did a great presentation last year as well. So it's always very interesting. You mentioned a bunch of examples and cases, which made it you know, particularly enlightening. Um, so how does Amdocs, as a, you know, a big vendor into the telcos, uh, work with uh, the startup ecosystem? How do you partner with smaller companies? And, like, this is a separate question from the presentation. Mm -hmm. How do you guys work with the startup uh, who might want to work through you to go to carriers? Right. So, so we have uh, a few different uh, programs within Amdocs that, uh, you know, uh, uh, go through some of the process, which I kind of uh, uh, skipped, uh, you know, pretty uh, uh, fast. Uh, but it's the uh, scouting. It's first of all understanding what the customer needs. Mm -hmm. uh, the customer, I mean the end customer or the service provider, you know, what are they actually looking for? Yep. Um, then it's scouting and, you know, looking around, uh, trying to find uh, what the uh, uh, best solutions uh, out there uh, are. Uh, and then trying to see how we can work together with this specific uh, partner, the specific startup, yeah. whether we build a, a proof of concept, whether we build a joint demo, uh, or, uh, you know, whether we integrate them in our solution, or whether it's something, uh, you know, more standalone that we just bring as uh, uh, additional value to our customer. Uh, so it could be different, uh, different models there. Good. And uh, I know you guys are involved with the AT&T in partnership with the Foundry, and that's in Israel, right? Correct. So, so we have a few. Uh, that, that's another avenue that uh, that we have um, around the innovation centers, like the AT&T Foundry, which we have uh, in Israel, uh, which is specific to a, a service provider, in this case, AT&T, uh, where we, again, we work with them uh, and look for the right solutions uh, based on their needs. Uh, we have their network in the foundry, so, you know, we can test everything right. uh, directly, uh, you know, on the AT&T network, et cetera. Uh, so that's another way that we work with uh, a few service providers, global service providers. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you. <laughs>